What's up everybody? Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're going to talk about boa constrictor regurgitation or snake regurgitation in general. So this is a comment and a question that I see all over social media. I get it asked quite a bit and I think it's time to address the reason why it's happening and how to fix it. So this is going to address 99% of the reasons why snakes or specifically boa constrictors will regurgitate. But again, this can apply to all snakes because snakes are cold blooded and most of them are regurgitating for the same reasons. So just to show you as an example in this video, this is a Pacalpa Peruvian boa constrictor. I produced her about a year ago. She's an awesome snake and uh, actually if you look at my videos, my how to handle or quickly tame and socialize an aggressive defensive snake, you're going to see this girl as one of the examples. So you can, as you can see from a socialization standpoint, she's come a long way and uh, she's a really great snake. Um, I did want to use this girl as an example because BCC is usually where People have the problems with regurgitation, at least in boa constrictors, but generally boa constrictors have a very sensitive stomach as they're young, less than six months old, and regurgitation can be a real problem if there's some of these factors are off. Uh, again, this can be applied to other snakes as well. This regurgitation problem can apply to things like scrub pythons and some of these other more rarer species that tend to have more sensitive stomachs and very applicable to wild caught animals. So step one, the reason why, first thing you need to do is figure out why your snake is regurgitating and, and fix that problem. Then we're going to discuss what to do after it's happened and how to get this snake back on track. So there's usually three reasons that this is going to happen to your snake. Uh, reason number one, your temperatures are off. They're either too cool or too hot. Generally, it has something to do with the snake being too cool. So snakes are cold-blooded. Unlike humans, they need to get heat from this external heat source that we provide. You need to make sure that your temperatures, at least for boa constrictors, this can range from other species, but for the most part, for boa constrictors, your temperatures need to be around 85 to 95 as a hot spot at all times. They need this heat to digest. Their metabolism depends on it. They need to get their body and their blood moving so that they can digest the food that we're feeding them. If the temperatures are too low, it's like putting a piece of chicken on the counter. It's only a matter of time before the, the, the food is going gonna, is gonna to start to rot. It's going to create gases and the snakes can be very uncomfortable and regurgitate this food. So step one, check your temperatures. That's what I do. That's what I recommend everybody else does. Once they've checked their temperatures and they say, hey, this is good, or I've checked my temperatures, it's good. And you'll usually know this, this is step two, but you'll usually know this as it's happening, is check your prey size. Is your prey size too large? Specifically boa constrictors under the age of six months old, they have really sensitive stomachs. So if you feed this something that's too large, you're trying to grow this snake too quickly, uh, your, your snake can have a very difficult time digesting. I'm not going to get into the feeding frequencies and intervals and things like that, but I will get into prey size. So this snake right here, it's about the size of a half dollar, maybe a little bit larger. She's on small rats right now, and a small rat is just about as wide as the widest part of her body. When I feed that, it's going to put a really small lump that's kind of just barely visible as, uh, as, as I feed her. If I feed her something that's a little bit larger than the largest, largest part of her body, this is going to put a much larger lump, a very big lump, specifically a day or two later as they start to digest their food. This, this prey starts to de decay. It starts to uh, create gases. Their stomach acids start to get into it. And as a result, the prey starts to expand. That's usually when you're, you're going to see regurgitation, and that's usually why you'll see it a day or two later, is because the prey size was too large, it, it expanded, the snake couldn't handle it, and it regurgitated. Now, this is going to go right into reason number three that your snake could be regurgitating. It, you are just stressing it out too much. You're overhandling it, you're overwatching it, you just can't leave the snake alone. So again, specifically in that one to two day range, people always say, how long should I wait until I handle a snake? I need to do a minimum 24 hours, minimum 48 hours. There is no minimum. Until you can't see a lump, you're probably handling it too soon. Specifically, if you go put this snake in, uh, you feed it, and a day later, you wait 24 hours, you say, oh, it's not a bad lump, you, pay, you take it out. This is still in the process of digesting, and that is very dependent on your temperatures, on how quickly it can digest, but it's still in the process of digesting its food. In the process of that, now you go and pick it up, you move this thing around, you're generating gases, you're moving fluids, you're, you're pushing on the organs of this snake, and then it doesn't feel comfortable, you put it back into its cage, and it regurgitates. This can also happen if you're constantly hovering over the animal, constantly watching the animal, and you won't leave it alone. So think about it as like, if, if when you feed a snake, 
pretend it's like when you're sick. When you're sick, you don't feel good. You're sitting there and you're, you're trying to digest or you're trying to get better, but then you have me standing over there watching you every move. That's going to stress you out. It's going to stress me out. It's definitely going to stress your snake out. So you have to think these things aren't so much different than we are. They're just uh, the way they function is a little bit differently, but they can still get stressed out from being overwatched or overhandled. So those are the three reasons why your snake can regurgitate its food. Reason number one, your temperatures are off. Reason number two, you're feeding too large. Reason number three, you're stressing this thing out by overhandling. And that kind of goes hand in hand with reason number one, because if your temperatures aren't on, you're going to stress the snake out too. So how to fix this? This is very important to fix this properly. Once a snake regurgitates, its stomach acids are basically gone. Its stomach is a mess. It's like us getting over a week-long flu. We're in bad shape. So what we need to do with these snakes, you need to wait time. You give it at least a week. Some people say two weeks. It really depends on the situation of the snake. If this snake is super skinny because, you, let's say, you got it in as a rescue, and the snake's very skinny, now... And snakes can be skinny. Snakes can be very, very skinny. So if this snake is very, very skinny, it's very important to get the snake eating and get some food into it to be processing and to put some weight on, or you could be in a whole different bad situation. So I usually say, wait a week and feed something very small. So again, if this is on small rats, I may feed it a fuzzy mouse, something tiny, about a week later, something that I know this thing can easily digest. It doesn't have to put much effort in at all. That gets its stomach built up, it gets the acids flowing, it gets the snake into good shape quickly. Then again, a week later, feed it a fuzzy mouse, feed it, feed it something small. That way it can really start processing this food, and then from there you should be in the clear, assuming your temperatures are good, and then your meal size is appropriate on the next meal around. So let's say two meals away, you're going to start feeding this maybe an adult mouse. Then you slowly taper up to a larger meal size until you get to the proper size food. Again, for this snake, it might be a small rat. So once you've tapered onto that, then you should be in good shape, you should be in the clear, but you always have to be careful, um, no overhandling, your temperatures are good, and your prey size doesn't push it. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys watching. I really appreciate this channel growing. I couldn't do it without you. I do this for you guys. Hopefully you, you like these tips. Hopefully you like the channel, and we'll keep it moving. I got some good videos coming out. I do have some uh, some videos recorded that I want to post up, but I'm going to wait. This Saturday you're going to see a video. I'm trying to do these videos every Wednesday and Saturday. They may be a little bit delayed, but I'm going to keep them coming for you guys. If you have topics that you want to see, let me know. Specifically, if they're shorter topics, I might do those on the Wednesdays, and I'll do the longer topics on the weekends. That way you guys have the time to watch them, and you're not skipping around. You can really get a chance to focus on what I'm saying. So let's Let's take one more look at this snake. She's awesome. I love her. Uh, I have four or five others that I'm gonna. I have. I may have some of these guys coming this year. We'll see what happens. But again, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you following. Let's keep it going.